On the stage here, we have Glenn Maxwell, founder and president of the Terra Mar Project, a nonprofit whose mission is to create a global ocean community to protect and promote sustainable development of the ocean. Glenn is easily one of the smartest, most fascinating people I've ever met. This is proven by the fact that she holds a bachelor's and master's degree from Oxford University, is a private helicopter pilot, a trained EMT, a qualified ROV, which I had to look up what that was, and a deep worker submarine pilot, in addition to being fluent in four languages. This is what I, what I had written down before I realized that she spoke at the UN nine times since the last time I saw her. So with that, I'd like to welcome Glenn Maxwell. Thank you. Excellent. Good afternoon. Um, I noticed that my speech today was leveraging technology to create a global ocean community. I'm going to change that on you, and I'm going to leverage technology to create a new country. Now, I know I speak with a funny accent, and so, yes, I did say country, not company. So, with that, I'm the founder of uh, an internet project called the Terramar Project. It's an ocean-based uh, digital platform to, uh, which I'm going to be talking to you about. I just want to go back briefly to talk to you about why I got involved in the ocean, and I, uh, because I think it's important to have history. So I started uh, diving when I was nine, having become passionate about the ocean, watching Jacques Cousteau on TV. And it led to a lifelong exploration around the ocean that ultimately ended with me becoming a deep worker submersible pilot. On one of my first submarine dives, I was absolutely so excited. I thought, my goodness, I'm going to see a new sea creature. I'm going to be this amazing explorer. And uh, off I was. I went down into the deep. And I went down to over 1,500 feet. And at 1,500 feet, I switched on the lights, hoping to see a new mythical sea creature, but in fact what I saw was a plastic hanger. I was so absolutely devastated, but it was at that moment that I realized that I was really going to dedicate the rest of my life to uh, taking uh, an involvement with and bringing an education around uh, the ocean. So I just want to ask everybody here a quick question. If I told you that you own something versus rent it, would you care for it more, look after it more if you owned it than if you didn't own it? Please, if you think that you'd look after something more if you owned it, raise your hands. Well, I think that's about 100%. <laughs> so the good news is that I want to tell you that you actually own 45% of the planet. So let's quickly just look at this map. 71% of the planet is ocean. 64% of that ocean lies outside of any single country's jurisdiction. And under the law, that 64% of the ocean belongs to each and every one of you in this room. It's called your global commons. So the assets of that 64% are yours. The fish, the oil, the gas, the diamonds. Now, this part of the world is just becoming uh, much is, is just coming into focus. Think, um, think about the Malaysian plane that went missing. Think about endless hours on CNN and TV and every news network that focused on this area as they were looking for the plane. Every day we heard, we found the plane, we found the plane, we found, we found some piece of garbage floating. And it turned out, in fact, no, it, it wasn't the plane. It was just some ocean trash. Um, today, if you open your newspapers, the front page of your newspapers are focused on clashes between China and uh, the Philippines and China and uh, Thailand on ocean-related issues. So the ocean is the next frontier. It's the next big debate. It's the next big grab of, of space, of uh, ocean space, if you will. America alone um, has about... Uh, the size 2.5 times the size of the Louisiana Purchase to be to be had through the continental shelf issues. Why is the ocean so important to us? Outside of the fact that under there lie millions of dollars of or billions of dollars of assets and the fish, 
I'd like you all to take a huge, deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. That second breath was created for you by the ocean. Um, it also creates 98% of our rainfall, and it drives and controls all of our weather. So if it's unhealthy or is in trouble, we can, we can understand that it has a net-net knock-on effect on how we live our lives today. We have also, it, it feeds also 16% of the global population on a daily basis. And I'm just going to pick three of the problems that face the ocean. Uh, one is overfishing, and you might think, why is that a problem? It's because if you take out uh, the largest fishing net in the world today, um, it, the mouth of it alone can hold 12 Boeing 747s in its mouth. And you can imagine how much fish that thing can just suck up. And the issue with overfishing is that it is removing key species from the ocean that the ocean needs to be productive. That little picture on the side there with all those little critters floating around in it, that's one drop of ocean on somebody's finger. And all those little microbes are what create the oxygen, what feed the fish, that have little planktons in them. And that's just one tiny drop. The bottom photograph that has a circle that says boat um, I don't know if you can see it, but the, all those little black dots are actually fishing boats. And those fishing boats, it's Chinese actually, are fishing for shrimp. Now, if you can imagine, that's not going to, if you're a shrimp and you see this armada coming, <laughs> you know you're going to get eaten that day because there is no surviving that armada of fish. Um, the super unattractive picture here with sort of flotsam on it, that's called a, a dead zone. There are about 450 of those and counting. Um, it's just areas where there's not enough oxygen to support life. So the question is, how do we address some of these problems? And I think we care because if we don't care, we can't breathe, we can't eat. It has a very important effect for all of us. So I'm at uh, the reason I speak so often at the United Nations and the reason why I created this digital platform and the reason why I'm here talking to you is because this September the United Nations are voting to create a new set of goals called the Sustainable Development Goals that are uh, replacing a set of goals that were created in 2000 called the Millennium Development Goals that focused on important issues such as HIV and malaria. And the Sustainable Development Goals currently, uh, which will be the roadmap for the next 15 years on our planet, do not mention the ocean. And I say to myself, how is it possible how is it possible that a roadmap for sustainability of our planet, of which 71% of our planet is ocean, does not contain the word ocean? And so I thought to myself, that's just mad. And for the next generations that come uh, after us, that's just not going to happen like that. We can't, we can't allow that to happen. So I created the Terramar Project, which is this digital platform, and create symbols such as I think we can all understand this is I love the ocean. Now, each and every one of you in this room has a network. Uh, you are on Twitter, you're on Facebook, and this is the new way to communicate. Um, the way that we normally think about the commons is the, the tragedy of the commons, if we even think about it at all. But I think we have a unique and amazing opportunity today to turn what has always been known as the tragedy of the commons into the first success of the commons. And that's because of each and every one of you in this room has the power and the ability to change the way that we think about this world and our oceans and the part that you own, because you own it. It is yours, and you do have a decision to make. So because you own that 45%, I created a pledge. And the pledge is that you love the ocean. And when you say, yes, you love the ocean, you receive a digital passport. And the passport is how I connect you to the global commons. And it's how I then go to the United Nations and say, yes, we have X thousand people who care enough that signed in, that got a passport, and then shared it with one, two, three, a hundred, a thousand, a million of their friends. And we are going to create a global community. Because I only see, uh, I don't see the things that divide us. Normally what divides us, creed, color, caste, religion, sex, age, I don't see those things. I see us as one species 
with one home and one common destiny. And I don't see multiple oceans. I don't see the Atlantic, the Pacific, um, the Mediterranean. I see one ocean because ultimately everything is connected as we are. But if we don't participate in it and we don't use social media, which is the new tool for connecting each and every one of us and connecting us and, and our friends across the globe, we're not going to make it. So we have other tools for engagement on the site, which is how I, I try to grow the site. So because you do own the ocean, I wanted to, and I worked with Google on this, um, who, who was, helped me start this project, you can actually sponsor and own a piece of the ocean. Obviously, I'm not selling the ocean. It's only a digital representation. But you get to buy a piece of the ocean on here. You get to tell a story about it. And you get to share that story about why that piece of the ocean specifically is important to you. Um, Google creating uh, the same as Google Street under the ocean so that you can dive across uh, the globe and dive underneath and see what, what goes on. And um, I have multiple uh, areas that you can dive under the ocean and have this extraordinary um, 3D image that's fully 360 degrees and look where you're going to dive. And eventually, uh, th there will be many more of these places. So when you decide you want to go to visit some place in Bali or you want to go to Monterey or wherever you want to go, you should be able to go see what, what am I going to see in the ocean. And frankly, if you don't like diving, you don't like the sea, you can go and have a look at it. It's so gorgeous. It's almost as good as going there. Um, this little chap with a little beacon on his head. Uh, so the other thing that I do is I take data and I put it on the site. So you can um, tag the animals. So part of, part of knowing what's happening in our world is knowing what's happening to the sea creatures that are there. Part of knowing what's happening to the sea creatures, you have to monitor them. So here we have tracking devices. Um, this particular one's done out of Stanford. And on the map, uh, we don't currently have this on the site, but it's coming. You'll be able to track your animals and see when they come to visit you in whatever ocean parcel you have or see where they are around the world. Of course, we're across every social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Instagram, Pinterest, and each and all of those are both individual and collective. They all carry the same message. And the idea is to connect across multiple platforms to appeal to multiple age groups and to multiple personalities and populations. Um, when I look at our analytics across all of our social media, there's, I think the only country that we don't have a representation currently is North Korea. I'm working on it. Um, we also have a daily digital newspaper called The Daily Catch, and we put that out every day with the top five or six stories from around the, the world, um, connecting all um, rivers, lakes, oceans, uh, uh, news. Because at the end of the day, uh, what's interesting about this is whatever you're going to drop on the floor today, whatever it is, be it the plastic bag or whatever, it will ultimately end up in your ocean because it'll go to a landfill. That landfill will then... Uh, leach into the water system, that water system will go into a river and that river will discharge into the ocean. So we also have games that you can play. What sea creature are you? Um, my, one of my friends was super disturbed because every time she played she became a different creature. I said that was all her multiple personalities. <laughs> uh, do, do try it. <laughs> um, so the question is, I, I ask each and every one of you here today who have the power to change the world to go to the Terramar Project site, that's the terramarproject.org, sign the pledge and share it with your friends because to do that means that you are doing something, you are helping the ocean, you are making a difference, you are using the new tools of the social media platform that will make a change. I invite you all to do that and I would just like to say thank you for your time and I hope to see you on the site.